Let me pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, we do not want to stand outside the gates and never enter in. We do not want to let this moment pass and go our way again. But Lord, we want to come before you to worship, to give our hearts to you, even tonight. Lord, speak to our hearts what is upon yours, so that we will not miss you, what you want to say to us tonight. Bless our time, even for our brothers and sisters, as, as they make time tonight to come before you, Lord. Speak to us, minister to us, and bless our time. And most important of all, after we finish this whole book, the book of Joshua, that indeed the result is we will choose to worship you. We will choose to worship you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, once again, welcome to WOW in Zoom. Um, thanks for joining us, especially for those who have been uh, with us for. Uh, all this while and once again welcome even if you are new today welcome uh, today uh, I just want to once again remind you of the uh, learning uh, objectives why are we here first thing first uh, I hope that uh, after you know all these sessions um, you got to know a little bit more about God and hopefully when you know God you cannot help but to love him but to love him. I hope you have enjoyed uh, our learning so far. Please continue to do so. Continue to grow in knowing God. And the idea about knowing God is also so that we might please him. It is also um, our desire for you to get to know God's word and to love God's word. Hopefully, uh, we have given you uh, enough handles for you to you know, study the word on your own. Uh, not for knowledge, but for life transformation. Also for you to um, know and love people, though we cannot meet, you know, but uh, I hope that uh, whoever that you are around you will also experience this love that you have received from the Lord. And with that, I do encourage others to continue to dig into the Word of God. Okay, so these are the objectives and uh, our prayer for you as well. With that, we're going to um, zoom into the book of uh, Joshua. We are finishing, you know, the book of Joshua, Joshua 24. And um, we started at the beginning of the year. And now uh, we are coming to the end. Uh, the notes are made available. So I give you a one to just download it uh, at bbtc.com.sg slash wow. Okay, you will see the notes go all the way to the end. Uh, Joshua chapter 24. All right. With the notes. Um, it will help you to follow uh, through as I go through this book or this chapter. I'll just give you a few um, seconds to do so. Kim has kindly also put it inside um, the chat so feel free to download that as well okay let's proceed i always begin this with these three questions because these are the three questions that i ask um, myself when i do my quiet time and that is what does the law require of me and the four things that i often uh, uh, i will um, ask myself is what is one thing that god wants me to keep doing you know that what is one thing that god wants me to improve what is one thing that God me to, want me to start or to stop using the acronyms of uh, KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep, improve, start or stop. And I also ask myself this question, what have I learned about God today? Because I don't come to the Bible, I don't come to a book, I come to God. I come to a person and I come to God to ask Him to share more uh, with me about Him. The more I get to know God, then I will know how to become more like my God. After all, I make in the image of God. And then I will ask God questions. You know, what questions do I have in mind? I will ask God. Um, after all, God knows all the answers. Sometimes um, He may not answer me immediately, but um, you don't be surprised. You know, the Lord will just answer us uh, according to His good uh, timing. So these are the three questions that I hope that you also um, put at the back of your mind. And then uh, after the study tonight, we're going to ask you these three questions. May the Lord speak to you. I want to begin with this quote. 
A.W. Tozer put it this way. He says, um, Christianity is hard. It's hard. You know, uh, when we try to serve God in man's way instead of serving God in God's way. You find Christianity very hard? Sometimes, perhaps, it's because we're doing it our way, using our strength rather than the strength from God. And then today, this is what we're going to talk about um, from the book of Joshua. I pray for you, so we'll just proceed. All right. Again, uh, with your notes, fill in the blanks. If you see uh, what's underlined, that tells you that um, there's a blank for you to fill it up. If you miss it, don't worry. All right. Uh, you will be in the website, and then you can download, and then just fill them up, okay, if you need that. Okay, now um, the team for the book of Joshua is to conquer and then divide, conquer and then divide. And the key verse is Joshua 1.8. I've given you a box, all right? If you do not have the notes and then feel free to just write on a piece of paper, just quote it, all right? And I just give you another minute to just do so. Joshua 1.8. Then we will, um, I will just show you the, the verse for you to check. It begins with this book of the law. Just write that down in the box. You can see that some of you are writing. Okay, let's take a look. All right, sorry if you need a little bit more time, but let me just move on very quickly. All right, okay. Give me some time to check. Allow me to just read to you. This book of the law shall not be from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Again, I want to emphasize that the good success here for Joshua is to divide and to conquer and divide the land to conquer and divide the land. Now, the breakdown of this book is divided into five parts. The commission of uh, Joshua. So there was there's, there was a divine commission where God called Joshua. And then there was this uh, human uh, aspect as well. The people say, yes, we will follow you, Joshua. So there's this uh, divine aspect and also human aspect, the commission of Joshua. And then uh, they move on to um, entering the land, all right. So they, they enter the land. Um, as they enter the land, we, we also divide it into three parts, you know, which is uh, before entering the land, what did they do? Then after that, they get into the water, the Jordan River. What happened? And then after that, uh, after you know, uh, after the Jordan uh, crossing the Jordan River, what happened? You know, so this is actually enter the land, then they conquer the land. Again, this is divided into three parts. They, they conquer the center part, the south, and then after that, the north. And divided the land, um, starting from uh, the east to the west, to the special cities. And then those um, special cities refers to the cities of uh, refuge. And also the tribes then that are departed. Finally, is the death of Joshua, which is what we're going to talk about tonight. All right. So this is actually um, the breakdown of the book of Joshua, the commission of Joshua, enter the land, conquer the land, divide the land. Today, we are at the last part, the death of Joshua. Now, what's the purpose for us? When we study this book, what's the purpose, you know, um, when this book was written for us? The purpose um, is given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 11. 
you know, where it says that this thing happened to them, refers to the Israelites as an example, that they were written down for our instruction, now refers to us, on whom the end of the ages has come. So in other words, you know, the, the book itself is not just a history, you know, a record or record what happened, but also so that you will, it is an example for us to know what we should do next, all right? So that is um, the purpose. And today, we're going to zoom in. After all that has happened, you know, uh, look at the pictures here. And you try to recall actually what happened, right? So the, the top one basically uh, uh, was to, uh, to attack uh, Jericho and then the wall just uh, fall. You know, um, uh, fell and then of course uh, crossing the Jordan River and the sun stood still. So the question I have for you tonight or the topic for tonight is what should I do next? What should I do next? What should you do next? Okay? Let's bear in mind that there must be something that God has for us tonight. What's that? What's that? So what should you do next? With that, we're going to zoom in the text. We're going to get some of you to read for us. I want to hear your voice. Uh, can I ask Brother Eugene? I've been calling you. Yeah. Are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I've been. <laughs> yeah, can you read for us? Uh, just um, sure. two slides. Two slides. Okay, this is the first one. Okay. okay all right. Get ready. Thank you, brother. Let's go. No worries. Okay, Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to um, Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham and of Nahor. And they served other gods. <clears throat> then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river, and led him through all the land of Canaan, and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau, and I gave Esau the hill country of Zaire to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Yeah, the next one. And I sent Moses and Aaron. And I plagued Egypt with what I did in the midst of it, and afterward I brought you out. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued their fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. And when they cried to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and made the sea come upon them and cover them. And your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. And you lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank it's you okay. so much for your faithfulness as well. The Lord bless your heart. Yeah. Um, Kim, can I get you to read for us the next two slides? Okay. Verse 9. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and fought against Israel. And he sent and invi invited Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam. Indeed, he blessed you. So I delivered you out of his hand. And you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the leaders of Jericho fought against you. And also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gergeshites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I gave them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out before you, the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored, and cities that you had not built, and you dwell in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive orchards that you did not plant. One more slide. Thanks, Kim. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, 
Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. Thank you, Kim. Si Hua, can, you get, can I get you to read uh, the two more slides? Quite a bit to read today. Okay. Thanks. All right. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then He will turn and do you harm and consume you, after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua, Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen the Lord to serve Him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and His voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and put in place statutes and rules for them at Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it up there under the terebin that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with your Lord, with your God. So Joshua sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. Thank you, Sir Pa. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah, John, John, brother John, on are you there? Yes. Last few slides. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. not not slide. Last few verses. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, verse twenty nine. After these things, Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in his own inheritance at Timah Serah, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, north of the mountain of Gaash. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua and had known all the work that the Lord did for Israel. As for the bones of Joseph, which the people of Israel brought up from Egypt, they buried with them at Shechem in the piece of land that Jacob bought from the stones of Hamor the father of Shechem for a thousand pieces of money. It became an inheritance of the descendants of Joseph. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him at Geber, the town of Phineas, his son, which had been given him in the hill country of Ephraim. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate that. Let's zoom, to, zoom into uh, verse 1. As the Lord bless the reading of uh, his word. All right, so Joshua gathered all the tribes of the, the Israel and um, of course the elders, the heads, the, the judges, the officials, uh, and then to, all at this place called uh, uh, Shechen. All right, and then to, um, the question that we might have is that, you know, of course this will be the last gathering. Is it the same as uh, chapter 33? Okay, actually we are not too sure, but... Um, but for sure, this is the last one. This is the last one. So the question, why this place? That brings us to the last, uh, the first study of our study tonight. And that is the place. The place. Okay. Okay. We, when we study the place, we can actually um, do it um, so-called um, either geographically or spiritually. So let's take a look uh, at this place. Uh, right? it's, it's actually um, at the bottom you see that um, it's between two uh, so-called uh, mountains and then geographically it is actually situated in a valley near its entrance and just um, right in the middle of uh, two uh, mountains uh, Mount uh, Gerizan and also Mount Iba. All right, and somehow because of uh, how this uh, valley you know, is between these two mountains uh, it was, uh, it was told that um, human voice could actually be carried, you know, through uh, distance as the people gather there. You know, so it's, it's like a, a amphitheater, you know, with, without sound system, you know, but somehow you're there and then after that you can hear people talking. 
So this is actually uh, what happened is situated in a valley and um, between these two mountains. Now, interestingly, um, beside uh, is a geographical, uh, you know, uh, reason um, also because spiritually several things happen there, good and some not so good. Um, this is the place where Abraham first came to the promised land and God spoke to him about a covenant, you know, with uh, Abraham in Gen Genesis chapter 12. This is also, you know, where Jacob purchased a land, you know, there. Later we will, we will, we, I will show you, you know, why, why did he, why did he do that? But uh, Abraham and Jacob both built um, an altar to the Lord at Shechem. Sadly, this is also where uh, Jacob's two sons, uh, Simon and also Levi, uh, murdered the men of Shechem. All right. Uh, Today is not a time to tell you the story. I encourage you to read the book of uh, Genesis to find out more. You know, so, but this is uh, um, a place where Jacob then recommit himself to the Lord. And um, he, he took all the idols in his family and then the fact buried it uh, under a tree in this place, Shechem. This is a very special and unique place in the history of Israel. And now again, you know, history repeats the people gather here for the last words of Joshua and they build an altar there. The question is, what did God have to say to his people through Joshua? With that, that begins with um, four movements I want to share with you. Now, um, I call that uh, the movements, you know, um, stories within the story. Basically, Joshua started to share with them what happened. But uh, as Joshua was sharing with them, um, basically there are four stories inside this story. Uh, I call it the four movements. So the first movement, basically, is about Abraham. It's about Abraham, uh, Terah, which is uh, who is um, Abraham's father, and also Abraham. Long, long time ago, you know, that's how uh, Joshua began, you know. He said, Thou said the Lord, God spoke to me and I want to tell you this. All right, long, 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 long time ago. Of course, of course um, you know, they only put that long ago, all right? But that's quite, quite, quite some time ago, all right? The, your fathers refers to Terah and also Abraham. They live in uh, uh, Euphrates uh, uh, River. So beyond the river refers to Euphrates uh, River, not the Jordan River, okay? And then he, he says that uh, they were worshipping or they, they, they serve other gods. In other words, Abraham, uh, in today's context, he's not a Christian. All right, he, 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 he actually, he doesn't worship Yahweh, you know, um, but they were actually worshiping other gods. The, the question, of course, uh, we might ask is, uh, what, 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 what God did they worship? And uh, you can see that from the picture, you know, um, the place where uh, Abraham came from, you know, they worship the moon, all right? And uh, in fact, it's the center of the moon worship. And so they were once not God's people. However, Joshua uh, shared with us this. He said that um, God took uh, Abraham and he gave him Isaac and gave him Jacob and Esau. And of course, gave him the promise, um, the, the covenant. Uh, interestingly, um, another man was mentioned here, Naho. You may be asking, um, who is Naho? Naho is basically Abraham's brother. And uh, why was he mentioned? Because after all, it's about Abraham. The reality is this. Is this uh, Naho uh, was actually the ancestor of Rebekah. Leah and Rachel. Our name is thinking, hey, who are this, who are this lady? Uh, 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 who are these um, uh, um, uh, um, people? Basically, they are the wives of uh, um, Jacob and also uh, Isaac. So, in other words, God has intentionally chose this family for a destiny and promised them to give them land. And today we can see that, the, that this promise has been fulfilled. So, this is the first movement. Verse 2 to verse 4. Then moved on to verse 5 to verse 8. We have the second movement or second story. And this is where, you know, um, a story of Moses and Aaron. Now again, in your notes, uh, you will have it uh, in page 3. All right, so feel free, feel free to just uh, uh, write them down. So God again said, I send Moses and Aaron. 
And then after that, I, I punish Egypt for what they have done. You know, I brought you out. I give you, uh, I give them to your hands and then I destroy uh, them as well. So what happened was, um, if we remember, uh, the Egyptians were uh, slaves in Egypt uh, for 430 years and God raised Moses and delivered them. All right, and uh, I'm sure you can still remember, you know, based on the picture there, you know, um, it's just like the, uh, like we are watching a movie. I, 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 I pause and then show you, you know, what happened. Moses, you know, was just calling, you know, um, uh, um, out to God and uh, God sent the plates, all right? So this was what actually happened, all right? The younger ones, uh, now they are very old already, you know, in jo Joshua's time, uh, might remember some, some of these things that uh, will actually uh, happen. In fact, uh, Joshua and Caleb Lily were there as well. So this is the second movement. The third movement or the third story is uh, verse 9 to 10, where you have uh, Balak and also Balaam. All right, maybe uh, you say, oh, what, 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 what Balaam, I know, I know, who, who is that? Basically, uh, if I talk about the donkey, the speaking donkey, ah, suddenly, you, uh, likely you will, you will remember, you know, because uh, this is a very uh, popular uh, stories that we will tell uh, the children. So, Balak and Balaam, however, uh, uh, so Balak actually asked Balaam to curse uh, Israel. How God did not listen to them, you know. In fact, um, later part, of course, um, um, Balaam uh, suggested, you know, that um, they can use sexual immorality and idolatry to cause Israel to sin, such that God will punish them. So, so Balit, Balit, Balit need not, you know, uh, do it on his own. Uh, how, um, then God uh, deliver them because of um, uh, fears, because of what he had, what he did, you know. To so the story was uh, is given in um, Numbers again for you to go and read on your own. Now the fourth movement. Now we come back to Shechem, Joshua, something more recent, everybody can remember. Now I just want you to imagine with me that you're standing there listening to Joshua, telling us about Abraham, telling us about Moses, then telling us about Balaam. And then now, you, Joshua and Israelites, I'll tell me something about you, something that's more recent. Do you still remember that, you know, God, you know, used us and then we fought with um, the leaders of Jericho, the Amorites, the Parasites, you know, Canaanites, Hittites, and uh, Jephusites, and then after that, God gave them to us. God even sent a hornet. Okay, there's a few interpretations to this, because actually, if you read the book of Joshua, uh, you don't really uh, uh, find any story about hornet, you know. Um, however, the truth is that, People try to interpret this saying that uh, like it could be re the real insects or, or maybe it's the in invading armies uh, f uh, or maybe, you know, just the report itself already terrified the, the people in, in, uh, in the promised land. So, so we do not know exactly um, this hornet, what does it mean um, at this point of time. However, at, at least for the people, when they hear this story, the fourth movement, they knew what Joshua was talking about. And I, was, I just want to point out to you that from here you will see that I highlighted in blue, I gave, I brought you, I took you. I did this, I did that. Of course, that refers, um, the I here refers to God. In other words, God linked all this together, remind Joshua to remind the people. And since you are in Wang, of course, after this four movement, the response, had to be, wow, that's what God did for them. That's what God did for them. Of course, they have a part to play, um, but yet God was the one who initiated and God was the one who helped them. So, bear this in mind also that uh, the Canaanites have sinned uh, greatly, not because that uh, the Israelites, you know, are, are sinless, you know, they are perfect, no. But just that uh, the Canaanites have sinned greatly as well. So, at the end of this moment, um, four movements, the question that you may want to ask yourself is, the Bible from Genesis to uh, Deuteronomy, Genesis, as well as Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, there are so many stories. Why this four movement? Why these four stories? Why this four? 
I don't think uh, it's because Joshua only had one and a half hour like us, you know, he had to cover everything. I don't think it's because of that. All right. Um, brother, I believe this, this, this four stories brings out something about God, about God faithfulness, about God sovereignty, about God's power in helping his people. Are you experiencing God's faithfulness? Are you experiencing God's power? Are you experiencing God's love for you? Now, because of what God has done, the question is, what's next? What's next? Joshua then move on to the next part, you know, which um. But you can see from this, um, there's so many stories. What's next? What's next? That brings us to the study. We had a study number three, conjunction. Now, therefore, Joshua said, after you, you heard all this thing, after you got to know all this thing, after I reminded you of all this thing, now, now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Another translation put it, serve him in sincerity and in truth. You need to understand that by now, Joshua, 110 years old, uh, he was like a father. He's, he was not just a leader. He was a spiritual father to this nation. Not just one tribe, not just one um, so-called um, group or clan. He, 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 he was the father of a nation. He fought for them. He fought with them. And before his last breath, he told the people, listen. Or he told his spiritual children, his spiritual children's children, now this is what you should do. After all that God has done for you, fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Why? Because it's worth it. Because God is worth it. Joshua did it. He experienced it. He modeled it. And look again, now, if you look at this uh, few verses, what's the key word? By now you should know that uh, by looking at this, what, what is the key word? Put inside the chat, you know, if you like to, just write down the key word. Yeah, just, just, just type. I presume you can type. Uh, I, I mean, the permission has been given. Okay, thanks, John. Okay, serve, serve. Yes. Any more? Just serve the Lord, okay? Thanks, Patrick. Let's take a look. What's the keyword? Actually, uh, our brothers are correct, okay? So serve the Lord, serve the Lord. In fact, the word serve appeared 15 times in this uh, chapter and 21 times in this chapter. It's important for us to serve. But let's bear this in mind. Who are we serving? We'll come to that later. Because the reality is what God wants from us is that we will serve the Lord. Now, I just want to point out that we're coming to the end, you know, and then um, the key word is the Lord, or the key phrase is the Lord. The book of Joshua begins with the Lord as well. Where the Lord spoke to Joshua. Moses is dead. Moses is dead, but God is still alive even today. So, what should they do? The fourth uh, study behind the study, of course, keyword is another study behind the study, but just, just for today, the keywords here, which I want to point out to you, is uh, or not the keywords, uh, the study behind the study is verbs. Okay, verbs. What's verbs? Verbs basically is action words. I really highlight for you. So, uh, those words that are being uh, underlined, basically, there's a blank for you to fill it up. So, do so. He says, um, put away, all right, put away, put away the idols, okay, put away the gods, okay, and then to put away the, the idols, and then you serve the Lord, and then you choose. In other words, it's a choice that you have to make. The question that, uh, <clears throat> or maybe from here you can see, I highlighted the gods of your father, the gods of the Amorites. Who, who are these gods? Let me give you at least some. Um, 
um, three of them that uh, likely will come uh, into the mind of uh, the Israelites when they are standing there. Maybe to us it's like, uh, who, who are these idols? Who are these gods? You know, maybe we have some in mind. But but for for the Israelites, these are the three. The first one, because of the move, move um, um, because of the story that was told earlier, likely they will have remembered the gods of the fathers refers to Abraham's gods, the moon god, at the site of uh, at the at the uh, Euphrates river. So there was this river that they, after they uh, Abraham crossed that river, they do not worship that god anymore. The gods. You know of their fathers okay so that is the first uh, group of gods that the israelite might be thinking of the second groups of gods that they might be thinking of could be the gods in egypt remember they were there for 430 years and yahweh was um you know so called um uh, they were waiting for god to save them the god of abraham isaac and jacob however god did, did not do anything and then at that moment so Many have started to worship uh, idols uh, in Egypt. How do I know? Because when they, they left uh, Egypt and um, crossed the Red Sea and then now in the desert, they actually made the golden calf. <clears throat> it's something that the Egyptian worship. So the gods of Egypt might be some that were in their mind. So after crossing the Euphrates water, uh, River, that they should stop worship the idols of the ancestors and then now after crossing the red sea they should stop worship the gods in egypt and then now they have crossed the uh, jordan river against the they face the gods of the amorites who are these gods of the amorites basically are the gods of the land isn't it true that uh, sometimes um, we move from season to season there are different gods that attract us. Now, I'm not talking about uh, idols that maybe last time when you worship uh, before you become a Christian. I'm talking about perhaps your career. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, your career, you should pursue your career and do well. Money. I mean, there's also nothing wrong with money. All right, if uh, you find there's something wrong with your money, uh, feel free to give it to me. Uh, no, don't give it to me. All right. Yeah. So, but. How about even our children? They will worship them. Everything surround around our children. What are your gods? What are your gods? Put them aside. Not to ignore them, you know, in, 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 but to know that they are they. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Of course, this God here refers to the idols. But I'm talking about what take the place of God in your life, in your hearts. Be careful. God says when you serve, when you come to serving, you serve God and God alone. I'll give you an example. If I tell you, because the church paid me very well, that's why I enjoy full time. Is there a difference? I think there's a difference. I think there's a difference. Of course, the church paid me quite all right as well. I'm just saying, all right? So the idea is to recognize that, you know, in our hearts, who are we really serving? And you have a choice. You need to choose. You need to choose. Choose God. Choose God. Because God is greater than all this. Now, coming to the end of Joshua, you know, Joshua shared with us, you know, that we are to fear God and to serve Him. Fear God and to serve Him. In sincerity and in truth or just now we read in faithfulness what does it mean in other words when you serve god serve with a sincere heart who are you really serving of course we serve the people right we serve we serve our god's people but i'm just saying who are you really serving in the marketplace also in church who are you serving search your heart ask god to search your heart and, and don't just serve uh, wanting to serve serve the way god wants us to serve the truth according to his word and serve faithfully not suka suka you know you want to do it this way you know i only do it my way you know i only can do it my way you know i want to serve my way only this and that you know, the rest i'm not but what does god really wants you to do serve god sincerely and in truth the lord will speak to you follow him because he knows what's best 
Now, no condemnation. You know, you might say, I'm, so, I'm not even serving God. Or maybe you're serving God. I don't know whether I'm serving the Lord or not. No condemnation. But the, the reality is, the focus is not serving. The focus is the fear of the Lord. When you fear God, you will follow. When you fear God, you will serve Him. The key is found in the fear of the Lord. And then when we fear God, we will serve Him aright. The idols will still be there. But we must learn not just to serve God, not just to fear God, but to serve God only in the fear of the Lord, in reverence, in awe of God. Joshua then added in verse 15, all right, for some of you, maybe you have this at home. Okay, this is not from my, my house, but I also have but mine's uh, slightly smaller, right? So uh, this, it, it says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So Joshua said that, all right, you all need to choose. Okay, I cannot choose for you, but for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. And of course, Joshua did it. Joshua fought with the Amalekites. Joshua was serving alongside Moses. In fact, he was serving Moses up to the Lord. He did not worship the golden calf. He answered God's call when Moses died and then um, he said, yes, I will, I, I will just be strong and courageous and I will lead. He surrendered himself to the captain of the Lord's army. He led the people. He fought hard. He did all that he could and he conquered and he divided the land. Joshua chose to serve. A choice that Joshua made when he was young and all the way up to now, 110 years old. Interestingly, Joshua could say with this, say this with such confidence, as for me and my household. You know, as I believe that Joshua had been a good father, or maybe grandfather, that he could say with such confidence. But most important of all, he knew in his heart that he was finishing and he would finish well serving the Lord. Can I just use one phrase to help us to just uh, summarize his life, which is something that I hope um, will, for you and also for myself. And that is, we should serve God, we should fear God with this in mind. And that is one God for one life. One God for one life. Abraham chose the one God for his life. Jacob chose as he become Israel, one God for his one life. Moses did that as well. Joshua did that. How about you? Is it one God for one life? Think about it. Think about it. Let's move on to chapter, um, um, verse 16. Then the people answered, Okay, Joshua, we heard you. We will not serve other gods. We will not. You know, because God did this for us, they recognized that God was the one who brought them out. They recognized God was the one who did all the great signs. They recognized, they remember God was the one who preserved them. And they say, yes, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord because He is our God. He is our God. Now, actually, this is a very good place to end. Yeah, because, um, I mean, just imagine Joshua, um, the book of Joshua ends with this. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. Who stop? Uh, Q and A time. It's a good place to stop. But Joshua said to the people, "You are not able to serve the Lord." Huh? Why? This is this brings us to um, the 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 fifth study uh, behind the study. The twist. Something. Something. Uh, you know, doesn't make sense. You know, basically, uh, Joshua was telling the people, "Say." You are not able to. This these words will come like a shock to them. Huh? What? You know, uh, I don't know. The first time I read this, I was like, what? You know, and and he mean it didn't end. And after that, Joshua had to tell us, you 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 you, you are not able to. There are these three interpretations to this, and I would like to share that with you. The first is is it questions of their abilities or sincerity or understanding? The first one, ability, was Joshua saying that. They could not. Or oh, then, then it's very arrogant for Joshua to say that I can, you cannot. I'm able, you cannot. Now listen carefully. You know, I believe this tree all makes sense. Why? 
Because the reality is that Joshua did not depend on his own strength when he served the Lord. You want to serve one God with your one life. You cannot depend on your own strength. Joshua was a man filled with the Spirit of God. He served God with the strength of God. This is what they need. They are not able to because of the abilities, their own abilities. They must rely on God. They need to depend on God even as they serve. That is so important. Was is a question of sincerity. In other words, do you really want to do that? You sure not. You know? No lie, you don't lie, you know, please lie, you know. Oh, we will serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord. One year later, eh, missing, missing in action. How come like that? Remember there was a time uh, in Mount, Zion, uh, Mount, Mount Sinai that where the people say that we will do everything that God said to us. We will obey. They told Moses that. A few weeks later, what happened when Moses was not around? They built a golden calf. Easy to say, but to do it is a different story. Like the forefathers, brothers and sisters, don't take this too lightly. I believe this is what Joshua was trying to say. You need to know what is in your heart. Is it about understanding? Do you know what you're talking about? First of all, you cannot depend on your own strength. First of all, you must search your heart. But is it really because this is what you want to do? Or this is a serious commitment. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. So, brothers and sisters, Maybe we need to ask Joshua what he really meant when he said that. Isn't it true, even for us? Sometimes we say, we serve the Lord, we'll obey the Lord, we'll follow the Lord, we will just you know, do what God wants us to do. And then, you know, we realize, hey, we failed. Are we depending on our own strength or the strength of God? Are we really sincere when we say that? Do you know what you are talking about? Something for us to reflect. And then, Joshua move on to talk about God himself. He said, be careful. Because our God is a holy God, he's a jealous God. Holy is one of a kind, unique. It's not other gods, no. It's not the gods that we talk about, no. This is the God, no. So, so I, I, he's trying, Joshua is trying to tell the people, no, no, listen. This is our holy God. He's a jealous God. Okay, now jealous usually is not a very good word. All right? You know, um, um, and, and, but jealous, in this context, is a good word. Sometimes, you know, we need to be jealous. What? You sure not? We can be jealous? Yeah. If this, this, I'll give you an example. If, um, okay, I'm happily married. Right? If someone uh, try to get close to my wife, should I be jealous? I think I should not. Be funny, right? People want to come to buy flowers for my wife. They have to send her home, you know. They have to buy food for her, you know. I mean, I say I cannot be jealous. I think something's wrong. You know, because there's this covenant between me and my wife, right? Yeah, so, so, so I think, you know, there's a place where God look at his people and know that they are worshipping the idols. What's wrong when God is jealous for those who belong to him? If he loves them, he'll be jealous. God is a holy God. God is a jealous God. So mean what you say and say what you mean. God cannot be mocked. God cannot be mocked. Don't just say. Do it. Do it. God will hold us accountable. No, no, no condemnation, no comparison. I want to encourage you. God is worthy of. God is worthy of. So the people then reply, No, Joshua, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Oh, no, second time, we will serve the Lord. Then uh, Joshua um, continued to say, Okay, if you want to serve the Lord, okay, then um, this is what we're going to do. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to get uh, witnesses. Okay, all right. Um, so you will be the witnesses, okay, of what you say. And they all agree. Okay, and then after that, interestingly, uh, by now you, 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 you realize that uh, uh, verse 24 says, The Lord we will serve, His voice we will obey. Three times. First time saying, We want to serve the Lord. Joshua said, Can okay, not? Uh, you sure not? Then after that, they say, No, we will serve the Lord. 
And then now the third time, you know, they, they say again. So Joshua said, okay, now we're going to, we're going to just, uh, uh, we're going to just uh, do something. All right. And, and just bear this in mind. When Joshua asked them to choose, Joshua is not saying that it's okay for you to choose the idols. It is not. Okay. But <laughs> this is not what Joshua was trying to say, but Joshua was asking them to seriously take this seriously. We can only serve one God. When we choose others, often than not, we might miss the destiny that God has for us. And um, Joshua asked them again, put away, put away uh, this ideas. And then they, and, and very interestingly, when, when we read this, right, Joshua actually wrote these words on, uh, uh, in, in the book of the Lord, which today we have it. And then he, he, he took a, a, a huge stone, you know, and after that, uh, he said, this stone is going to be a weakness against us. He was thinking that like, what? He used a stone to be a weakness. You know, what can a stone uh, do? But you really, you, you, actually, um, by now, uh, if you read the, 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 uh, the book of Joshua, this is the ninth time, you know, um, the ninth time where, where they actually um, use stones, you know, as... Um, 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 witnesses or even like um, to, to speak about you know the goodness and, and the work of God nothing wrong with using the, the object it is how ancients uh, were they, they, this is how they, they do it and then and then they use the stone as their uh, witnesses by now we have finished um, more or less um, um, up to this point and then Joshua sent them away so they left I'm not sure whether you uh, are familiar the reality is Joshua chapter 24, what they wrote there is actually a binding covenant. What you have read from verse 1 to verse um, 27, you know, therefore it shall be a weakness, lest you dealt falsely with your God. It's actually a tre treaty. You see in, in those, in, in the ancient world, in, in uh, Joshua's time, the Hittite has this treaty and and this is how it's being written. I put inside your notes as well. It goes something like this. Verse 1 and verse 2 actually give us the preamble. Basically an introduction of what happened. So they gather the people and also this is actually what happened that day. Verse um, 2 to actually verse 3 to 13. All right? um, verse 3 to 13. Basically it's the events that had, had actually happened. So, so Joshua talked about Abraham, talk about Moses, talk about uh, Balaam and Abraham now talk about what happened now. So there's a, actually a recall of actually what happened. Then there's expectations or consequences or conditions you know, in this treaty. So because of what God has done, this is, this is what you would like to do. But bear this in mind, if you do this, if you don't do this, then there are consequences. Okay? Finally, they will write this down. So it's actually a historical treaty. So this is actually what happened. So when you study this, maybe you just see it just like a story or it's a chapter, but to them, it's a treaty. So this is exactly what they wrote uh, in the book of the law. And this is what we get. And then they, 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 they actually buried it in the inheritance that they have received under something that looks like this, the Tarabin. Now he says that um, beside the um, century, the century here uh, doesn't, of course, uh, doesn't refer to the BBTC century, all right? But it's not even referring to the tabernacle in Ceylon. But basically, this is a holy place. And then the people just uh, bury this in the crowd to say that God, you know, this rock, this stone will be the witness. After giving the 50, Joshua, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, a good old age. Actually, same as uh, Josh, Josh, uh, Joseph. Joshua also died uh, uh, 110 years old. And I'm not too sure about you. If you remember, Moses was called the servant of the Lord. And then now, Joshua was called the servant of the Lord. I think this is a beautiful and a wonderful title to give to anyone. The servant of the Lord. The focus is not the servant. The focus is the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Why was he called the servant of the Lord? Why was he called the servant of the Lord? Let me give you a few 
then we can um, actually actually I really hope that you know there's there's a chance that we can study the character of uh, Joshua, you know just the books of the the, the Bible. But the other way to approach the book is actually study uh, um, Joshua himself. You know so, uh, but allow me to just run through some as I try to reflect and recall. He did exactly what the Lord his master wanted him to do. That's why he's called the servant of the Lord. How can the servant do what he whatever, whatever he wants to do? No, it must be because he did everything that his master wanted him to do. Then he's called the servant of the Lord. When is this circumcision pass uh, over, or, uh, uh, or when is it um, crossing the Jordan River? The exact way to do it: uh, conquer of Jericho, you know, defeat the the the, the enemies. No, Joshua did exactly what God, his master, wanted him to do. He served the Lord fearlessly. Remember, be strong and courageous, Joshua. Be strong and courageous. And he served the Lord fearlessly, strong and courageous. He remembered it. He served skillfully. But he really know how to fight. Remember, don't forget, no? Joshua was a slave. He was not trained to be a soldier or warrior. He was a slave. But he has learned to fight and fight well for God as the Lord fought with him. He also did it very strategically, you know, as I shared with you, why they attack the center first. Once they attack the center, the south and the north cannot come together to fight against them. So he divided the land even before he started fighting. He, he fights uh, Jericho and Ai, which is actually right at the center of the land. And then he attacked, uh, attacked the south, then after that, attacked the north. So he did it very skillfully as a planner, as a general as well. And um, he also learned from his mistakes. Remember, AI, he made a mistake and then he, he learned from it. He knew that this is not the, 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 the way to do it. You see, a leader must learn this well. Learn from his mistake well. Learn to turn your mistakes into mirrors for you. What do I mean by that? So that the next time you look at the mirror, go on, you made this mistake before. Don't make the same mistake again. You make a mistake already. Don't make the same mistake. Learn. Learn from it. That's how a servant of the Lord learn to serve better. You learn. Uh, make a mistake or too bad. Uh, then learn. Just keep learning. I still remember last time uh, when <laughs> my colleagues uh, make mistakes, they come to me and say, Mr. Low, Mr. Low, this and how. Oh, there's always one question that I will ask them. Whether it's the first question or the last question, it doesn't matter. I always ask them, what have you learned out of this? What is one lesson you have learned out of this? Because at the end of the day, anyway, the mistake made it. So what have you learned from your mistakes? And he was godly. He was godly. Why would people want to follow you? Why? After what people will know, uh, come on. Your motive must be pure. Your life must be honorable. You must be godly. You must be blameless. Then why people follow you? Not be a title, no. It's not by title, no. Joshua, the servant of the Lord. Why you live his life like that? But as for him and his household, they serve the Lord. He was godly. Not perfect, but godly. He was concerned about their future. I think a leader must always look ahead. Not for his own sake, but for the next generation. This is very important. Because we are not here for life. We are not here, we are here for life. We are not here for forever. We, we, we will be gone one day. We need to, we need to plan for the future. You see, God wants us to leave. We must leave something behind for our children and children's children. A legacy. And Joshua did it. He was thinking about the future while he was talking to them. A man who has impacted the whole nation, but that was that is still not good enough. He was thinking beyond something more. Not 10 years, but 100 years later, what would it be like? That is a servant of the Lord. If we just think for our own generation, we are in trouble. If our leaders just think about this generation, we are in trouble. We must think for the, we must think for the future. And lastly, he glorified God. He glorified God. How do I know that he glorified God? How do we know? Let me give you a few verses. Actually, they are about, I, I found about maybe eight or nine, you know, but let me just give you a four. You see uh, Joshua chapter 3, he said that, So that you shall know that the living God is among us. 
It's about our living God. He's not dead. Come on. He will drive all these, all these enemies out so that all the peoples of this earth may know the hands of the Lord is mighty. It's not, oh, the hand of Joshua is mighty. No, no, no. It's the hand of the Lord is mighty. Joshua 4 verse 24. To God be the glory. Shout at the Jericho, you know, for the Lord has given us the city. Whoa! Hallelujah! Give God praise! God has given us the city. The Lord fought for Israel. There has not been a day like this where the sun, the sun just be still and stop day. The Lord fought for us. How oh, God is God alone. He gave God the glory. Even his name, Joshua. Jehovah is salvation. Jehovah is salvation. He gave glory to God. Now, my brothers and sisters, God does not need celebrities. People who, who, are, who God was, God is looking for servants of the Lord who will serve him fearfully and skillfully, who will do exactly what God wants him to do, who will learn from their mistake even though they try to be godly, who thinks about the future of, for his kingdom and one who glorified the Lord. Someone might say that, um, but Joshua, when he died, don't have a successor. When there is no successor, there is no success. So, you know, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Good success. Joshua not very successful. Allow me to suggest to you to see from another perspective. Um, yeah, actually the reality is that most um, people, you know, would think that Joshua had failed in this area. Moses had Joshua, but Joshua had nobody. Actually, if you see from another perspective, Joshua did have people to succeed him. In fact, he had many of them. He passed on to the elders. Of course, their names were not mentioned. But it, just think with me. You see, uh, if all the tribes now uh, are scattered over the, the, the whole promised land, they're everywhere. How is it possible to have one person to lead everybody? Not possible. Uh. Kind of. What, one person want to take care of all GRC? Uh? Okay, let me, let me, let me, this is another, another thing. Okay. Okay, so the idea is, how do you take care of so many? Perhaps it was Joshua's idea that the elders should be leading. Second, after all, God was supposed to be their king and the elders to submit to the king. In fact, in the next book, Judges, God appointed Judges as different seasons of the life of or the journey of uh, Israelites. So did Joshua really fail? Maybe he did not. Maybe he did not. Maybe he did have successor and the elders supposed to pass them on. Of course, later part we read that um, the people failed to keep their promise. At this point in time, I want to show you three chairs. Uh, some of you may be familiar with this because uh, this teaching uh, was from uh, Bruce Wilkinson. And I find that um, this is a good time to just bring this up so that um, even for those who are parents or you know, grandparents, you, know, you can uh, have this in mind. Or oh, this is a recap. You see Joshua chapter 24, verse 18. The people says, he is our God. They knew God. They saw what God did for them. So there's this relationship with God. But the second generation, somehow the elders... You know, if you look at Judges chapter 2, verse 7, he said that elders who outlived Joshua have seen all the great work that God has done. So they knew God's works, but not God himself. We knew what God can do. What God did this, God did that. But they did not really know God. And very sadly, after that, the next generation rised and did not know the Lord nor the work that God did. And what did they do? They did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the past, the idols. The question usually people ask is, which chair are you now sitting on? You know God, wonderful. How about the next generation? How about your next, next generation? We must pass it on, my brothers and sisters. We must pass it on. The bones. Oh, 
what, what, what is this bone about? You know, these two verses, actually the last two verses seems uh, out of place. And I basically is trying to fulfill uh, Genesis chapter 50 verse uh, 25, saying that uh, God did not forget Joseph. Now, if you have a book so exciting like Joshua, you know, um, how will you end the book? I think just now I mentioned, uh, wow, he is our God. Wow, that's the best way to end. But you end with like, this person die la, that person die la, you know, buried la, you know, so a funeral la. And end the story like, nobody will buy your book la. And then you know what's the best part? It begins with death as well. Moses died la. Then after that, now all three die la, you know. Why like that? Because the book is not about the servants. It's about the living God. That's why. I mean, look at the book of Acts. What happened to Peter and Paul? You know, so, uh, you know Nothing about them after that. Because it's not about Peter and Paul. It's about God. It's not about how great Joshua was, but how great is our God. So when Moses was gone, God was still there. When Joshua was gone, God was still there. When Joseph was gone, God was still there. God was still there to even fulfill the promise that he gave to Joshua. God is a promise keeper. All the way, not just Joseph, not just Moses, but even all the way to Abraham. And God is a God of miracles. You look at um, crossing the Jordan River, the walls of uh, Jericho that crumble, and of course the hillstone from heaven, and then after the sun that stop. Wow, it's about God. Are you excited? I don't know where I read this book, I'm excited. It's about my God. And God is a very personal God. It's not like, what oh, I sent you stone, nah, you know, call the sun to stop. Nah, you know. he, he, he was there for Joshua. He met Joshua one night and, say, and, and then said, that, I'm the Lord you know, of the, the, the armies that you're going, to, you're, going to, you're going to defeat them. God met Joshua. And God saved Rahab, a prostitute. Wow. What kind of God is that? Very personal one, no. When you spend time with God, do you feel like that? I, I, I don't know. I, I find God very personal. God is like just beside me. You know? When I pray, it's like God is just beside me. It's not like God far, far away. It's not like God is very near. And then with the death of um, Ereza, you know, and um, someone took over, you know, as the high priest. Why, 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 why talk about this? I think, you know, like I said, that there was no success. I, like, like, I humbly, humbly beg to defer. The, the, the truth is from here, even the high priest has a successor. The generation pass. The next generation will arise to continue this journey with God. And God is not finished with his people. That's why there are judges, rule, first Samuel, second Samuel, first Kings, second Kings, first Chronicles, second Chronicles, and all the ways before Jesus came. God is not finished yet. Even not finished with us. That's the book of Joshua. It's about God. It's about God. The promised land. Okay. A lot to cover today. I'm not sure we have question and answer, but allow me to just um, go through the last part, which is the promised land. Now, brothers and sisters, if you, I, I, I shared yeah, in Joshua chapter 1, uh, maybe I'm not sure whether you are there, but I, I shared that the promised land doesn't sound like heaven to us. It's a place of victory, yes, but there are conflicts, failures, you know, battles, and also sin. Can I suggest to you, we are already in the promised land, in that sense. There are challenges, there are problems, there are issues, but we have victory in Christ. We have God with us. So the question I want to ask you is, even as now we are in the promised land, because after you cross over from darkness into His wonderful light, you are you cross. You don't need to cross Jordan River. You don't need to cross the Red Sea. You are already in the promised land. Are you living this victorious life in Christ? Are you experiencing what the Israelites are going through? That God is with them. Are you still stuck in the desert, or even wandering in the promised land? Don't. Lie. We can finish well. Two things. Put away the ideas. Fear God and serve Him in sincerity and faithfulness. But how, Pastor, how, how to do that? Go on, how to do that? Go back to your memory verse. Start with this. Don't let this book of the law depart from your mouth. 
this Bible, don't let Bible study finish already. That's it. Uh. No, la, please la, continue to read your Bible and meditate on it day and night, 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 and then be careful to do everything written in it. Obey, obey, obey. Whatever God says, just follow, just fo follow. And God will make your way prosperous. Not big house, big car. No, no, no. Prosperous in fulfilling what God has called you to do. And you have good success. What is good success? I define that in uh, chapter 1. Personally, I believe good success can be defined in using these two words. Pleasing God. It's about pleasing God. And then you fulfill the destiny and then when you meet God, and then God gives you a smile and say, good and faithful servant. Whoa! Is that what you want as well? After all this story, what should I do next? With that, let me end with the story. I think as we look at this um, chap this book, uh, this last chapter, there are three questions I want to leave with you. The first is, don't forget what God has done for you. What God has done for you. And what God expects of you. And finally, what is God going to do in you and through you? I grew up in a Christian family. I went to church. My parents put me in BBTC, a Sunday school, but it's in Mandarin. So that's why my Mandarin is slightly better than English. He said, Oh, sure not. Yeah. Okay, then anyway, you know, I, I memorized scriptures in Mandarin, okay, but I cannot remember. Now I only remember Ma Tai Fu, you know. Uh, so the thing is that, uh, and, and later part in secondary school, I, I joined a school band, and not, not a school band for it's just that they are so busy, and then I backslided for a few years. And um, then I came back. I started to serve from um, the little ones. The uh, little ones refers to the, the children to give them some tuition because, uh, I mean, they, they were quite, they were quite not, I mean, they are not well to do. You know, they even have a um, problem um, to find money for lunch, you know, so, um, so I give them some tuition. So that's how I first started, you know, serving the Lord. You know, just, uh, and, and then I realized that what would change their life is not uh, mathematics, it's not tuition. Is the word of God. Somehow, I don't know why. La. So I started to teach them, or I actually uh, uh, forced them to swallow the word of God. Okay, I just teach. La. I don't know. I just, whatever I learn, I just I just do it. La. I just teach them the word of God for, for years. La. And um, so I, I realized that um, as I look back, you know, this is what God did. I saw their lives being transformed with the word of God. And just praying for them. I still remember there was one retreat. I share them now like, because now they are much older. And when I when, when they were with, uh, when they were with me, whether they are P three or P five, and uh, in fact, one of them just came to my my place uh, last week. You know, I, she was P three, you know. Now she's like married with uh, one one kid, you know. So uh, I remember they were sleeping at this uh, 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 cell group retreat, and I I just lay hand on because SP say lay hand, so I lay hand on them and then pray for one not. Each one of them, I say, God, you bless them. They will not turn away from you. I just, I remember that night, you know, I just think, my last time, hand, no, no handphone yet, you know. So I used the torchlight, like, God, bless this boy, bless this girl, you know. And then that's what I did. So I just teach them the word of God. And God just saved them, God bless them. And then I myself, I learned so much. And I asked myself, you know, what does God expect of me? Nothing... Um, new, you know, but uh, from the text is to serve him and to fear him. But there were times I failed. I mean, sometimes I ask myself, how can I ask them to do that when I don't, I myself, I don't do it. And, and each time I come before God, oh, sorry, you know, please forgive me, help me again, you know. And, and, and I realized I just need to share with them the mistake that I made and, and, and I just journey with them. And some of you may be saying that, wow, every time, you know, uh, when God wants share the word, uh, he always talk about himself. Okay, it's not that I want to talk about himself, but uh, not myself, you know. But one of the one of my mentors actually shared this with me. He said it's good to share your testimony because um, it keeps you humble to remember you better obey the word of God before you share. I better practice what I preach. So I try to, because sometimes really I haven't applied that how, you know, I, I try to apply that. And I think this is what God expects of us, to serve Him, to fear Him, 
to obey Him. If we fail, we just come back to God. But what God is doing, I think God has a plan. I, I'm not too sure about you. I think the plan is not just a job. It's not the next promotion. It's who you become. You look at the story of Joshua. Is it the land? After all, at the end of the day, the land all taken away. But Joshua became a servant of God, just like Moses. What was God's intention? Is Joshua. Is you. Is Eugene. Is John. Is uh, Si Hua. God's intention is you. Don't forget this. God is more interested in the land. Excuse me. He's interested in you. Who will you become? So what will you do next? I cannot tell you what you will do. I only can tell you what I will do. Alright? Next week I'm starting SBC, Singapore Bible College. Actually, I'm the old, one of the oldest. Lah. I think so. Lah. I didn't go around and say, hey, how are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> you know, I didn't do that. But I'm really like uh, almost 45. I think I'm quite old. Lah. So I didn't look so young, you know, like 20 plus. You know, they were like, what well, this uncle want to study for? What for? Actually, I don't need. Because, I mean, in a sense, I'm 45 already, you know, got children, you know, I mean, and um, I, I think I know quite a bit, lah, you know. Yeah, I mean, as an elder and a pastor. But I ask myself, for the next 15 and 20 years, what does God want me to do? You see, if I finish my study um, in five years' time, hopefully I, I clear all of them. Lah. <laughs> in five years' time, I finish, I'll be 50, 50 years old, you know. Yeah, I will have another 15, 20 years to give to God. What do I have to offer? I hope I can study a little bit more, to know the Word of God a little bit more. Because the more I teach, the more I study, the more I realize that there's so many things I don't know. So what should I do next? I think it's to recognize that, you know, God just used my life. Yeah, learn as much as I can. You know, I don't need to search. Yeah. But I just need to learn, keep learning, so I can have something to pass on to the next generation. I learn from the godly men and women uh, in Singapore Bible College. Of course, BBTC, there are many. But we can always learn from many others who are not in BBTC. And with all this, what should I do? I think at the end of the day, the Lord is also mourning me and guiding me. I hope that um, I will not just be a spiritual leader, but a spiritual father to the next generation. I to spend more time with the young people to share with them the mistake that I made. And uh, the study start next week. So if you could, pray for me. Pray for me. The question is, how about you? How about you, my brother and sisters? What does God want you to do next? Think about it. Before I pray for you, can I just get you to just pen down on your, on your own? Just take one minute or two to just pen this down. What does God require of you? What have you learned about God today? What questions do you have in mind? I'll give you a minute or so to, to just pen that down on your own. Take more time to reflect on your own after this, right? Um, before I pray for you, again, the study behind the study, um, the place, you know, she um, when you look at a, a, a place, you know, don't just skip it, ask yourself, is this something that God wants to say to us from uh, this uh, particular place? The movement, the story within the story, conjunction, right? Look out for the verbs. Is that twist in the story? 
It's supposed to end already. Hey, Sunday, there's a twist. You know, John 20 is one of them. John 20 finished. Then after it got John 21, there's a twist. You know, don't miss that. Ending is very powerful. You know, look at the ending. I think ending is amazing. Look at the, how the book ends. I mean, uh, even Genesis, it begins with, the heavens and the earth, God created the heaven and the earth. Wow. That's how it begins. Though. But how did he end? He ends with a coffin. Isn't that amazing? Ends with a coffin. Have you ever wondered why? Think about it. How did Malachi end? Think about it. Ending is interesting. I ask you to think about it. And then ask yourself, what does this tell me about God? Homework. Huh? Still got homework. Last day. Of course, lah, you know. Yeah, you teacher must give homework. Okay. Read through the book of Joshua on your own. All right. No hurry. And uh, can I just suggest three more for you? Learn to draw your own study behind the study. Now this one, uh, you, you see, where, where do you, where, is there a book? You know? No book, lah. I learn from the people. I come out with my own study. Then when I read the Bible, I say, oh, this is how they study the Bible. So I draw my own conclusion. You can do that as well. All right? You didn't come from a book. You just come from my learning. And I tell you, I got about, about 50 of them. So take time to just, every time I see this, oh, look for the verbs. Oh, look for the conjunction. Oh, look for the ending. Oh, look for the twist. Oh, look for the tension. Draw your own. Study the word of God. Apply the truth. Don't study. This is only good for hate. Then you have a big hate. No. Have a big heart. A heart to love people, to lift out the word of God. Apply whatever that you learn. Go back to all your notes and see what did I say to God? What did God ask me to do? Go and do all of them. And then whatever that you are expected you know, to do next, do it. And then you know what's the result? Life transformation. Life transformation. No discussion, question. I don't really have time for question. But I, before I, okay, I don't, I'm, okay. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of you for making time to learn the word of God. And um, I also want to thank him. You know, she has been such a blessing, you know. She, you know, I am uh, the, the, all the people, all the pastors come and teach, you know, then she will be there just um, quietly, you know, doing all this. And then Kim, I just want to say thank you very much for just loving and uh, serving the church quietly. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah, that's Kim, okay? Yeah, amazing girl. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, all the pastors, Pastor Singley, Pastor Edric, you know, um, Pastor Darren Furley, and um, Pastor Eunice. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for the journey. Yeah, and then uh, before I close, all right, I just want uh, uh, some people may, may be saying that what, what's next? What's next? No, oh, wait lah, wait la. <laughs> Study a book, Joshua. You know, read through it again. All right, we will update you again. All right, we'll take a break, and then after that, uh, we we will share more with you. All right, so so just uh, take a break, and and remember this: don't rush through. Always take time to study the word of God again, and ask God. You know, is there something more that you want to tell me? Okay, all right. Uh, have one minute. Um, do we have any question? <laughs> I don't know whether I'm able to answer now. Let me see. Oh, there is actually a survey form. Yeah, feedback form. So, um, yeah, Pastor Ferdi has uh, put in the chat. So feel free to just click on it and then uh, give us your feedback because in a sense, we really want to um, so-called improve. So help us with that in the chat. I think we can put in, okay, yeah. First and three suggest that Israelite has idols. Okay, okay, that's a good question, Thomas. Uh, okay, the reality is that some believe that they do have idols. Yeah, some of them are worshiping, uh, still worshiping the idols. So, so, uh, you're you're right to say that. Yeah, you know. So that's why Joshua had to remind them: you must serve only one God. Yeah. So and then, but it, it, I I think it's, if you if you look at today, even in church, when we come to church to worship God. Isn't it true that our hearts, some of us, you know, um, still have some ideas in our life? I think we need to, it's a, it's a journey, lah. yeah, learning to put aside all these ideas. Yeah, okay. Hope that answers your question, Thomas. I want to honor your time, so uh, allow me to pray for you and um, give us your feedback. Yeah, so that we can um, do better, so that we can serve God better, so that we can serve you better. 
All right. Again, uh, also thanks for those who, who read the text. Yeah, sorry to put you uh, on the spot, you know, but I think it's a privilege to read the Word of God. So allow me to close. Father, we thank you so much for, wow, it is about you. It's not even about Joshua. It's not even about any of the pastors. It's about you. It's always about you. Well, help us not to miss this. And Lord, that, um, thank you so much as we study the book of Joshua. Help us to find the God of Joshua. Lord, help us to be amazed by you. Then we can really say, wow, look at the God that we have. So Lord, bless us. Lord. I bless my brothers and sisters. I, I just want to pray that God, that your word will sink deep in their hearts, not just in their mind, so that they can lift them out for your glory. Indeed, for your glory. So Lord, um, help us, you know, help each one of them in their journey with you. I do not know what they need to do next. You know, but Lord, you will reveal to us as much as you reveal to me. Lord, enable us because we want to serve you, but we cannot help us to serve with your strength. Help us, Lord. Help us to search our hearts so that we will serve you sincerely. And most important of all, help us to know what we are in for. And as we do it, help us to do it with all our heart because it's one God for one life. It is one God for one life. Bless us as we bless you. Bring all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. Good night. Lord bless you.